Hello, welcome back to the channel and we've been spending the past few videos focusing on my new G87 M2, modding it, go and have a look at those videos if you haven't seen them already. But today we're going to start focusing on my old M2, that's right, my F87 M2, which is just here, is coming out of warranty and uh, well, we know what that means, don't we? That's right, over the past six months ish I've been collecting parts for this car, waiting for this moment. Here's a quick sneak peek of some of these parts. This is going to be the first upload in a series of videos, maybe two or three. So please subscribe to get notified of those other uploads. And I'll share my journey of turning what is mostly a stock M2 competition into my idea of the ultimate track day weapon. This video is going to be all about power modifications to the car. And then after that, it's going to go away for some chassis modifications. So get comfortable, grab a drink and enjoy the ride. So I'd actually been using this car as a daily and it was now looking a little bit worse for wear. My wife had been using it, we hadn't washed the car. I'm ashamed to say it's almost been a bit neglected and not really cared for at all. It even picked up a slow flat along the way and that was something that had to be pumped up every few days. The front of the car is just looking really forlorn here. Um, yeah, picking up almost a little bit of stone chips that's going through the PPF there. Inside it's not looking much better, totally dirty. And as I said, it's been used as a daily, so we've had to be carrying around my dog in the car too. The only word for the rear is gross, really. Got the little dog mat there, but it hasn't really done too much. Been using it to ferry the dog around quite a lot, so much so that we'd actually taken him back from the vets after he'd had his little operation. Okay, so first things first, let's get this wheel sorted. Now, while the wheel's off, I think it's a good time to use this, which is a RAL code detector, I guess, and it allows me to work out the colour of anything. So let's have a look at these calipers, the 2NH caliper kit here, and try and work out what colour we think that is for the RAL code. More on exactly why we're doing this later. So the car is looking a little bit nicer than it was maybe previously when you saw it, all cleaned inside and out. And uh, yeah, just looking really good. That PPF really helping to keep the paintwork looking really fresh there. All clean inside, no more. No more dog hairs in there, all nice and clean. Those seats are gonna be coming out. So yeah, we're gonna tune this car. Um, well, it's gonna have a lot more stuff done to it than just tuning, but. We're gonna send it in for some power upgrades. And before we do that, we wanna take a check on all of the baseline numbers that this car is putting out. So in terms of performance, in terms of a lot of the numbers that are going into the car and out of the car, so power, intake temperatures, exhaust temperatures, that sort of thing. And we can't readily get that information out of the car in its stock form, but we can do it with one of these. This is a little uh, information data display that will sit in the vent just there. And so today we're going to fit that because it's going off next week for its power upgrade. So we've got to get it in, we've got to have a look at the car and see what sort of power it's putting out and see what sort of times it's putting out as well. So let's get on with that. Okay, so I've got some of the trims out already, but what we're going to do is connect the data display from the dash there through the vent, down through the dashboard and then down into the computer area thing that I've pulled out over there. Quick pit stop. Garage build underway. Got my little helper. Right, next we've got to remove this carbon dashboard. I've been using a flathead screwdriver with some electrical tape around it to protect the trim. I tried to use. Right, let's pull the vent out somehow. I think there's some tabs down there. Okay, so we've got the carbon dash part off there, then we've taken the vents out, and then we've taken the slats out as well. There now, down there, 
hopefully I don't ever have to put them back in because I have no idea how they're going to go back in. Lovely job here. Yeah, so now we should just be able to plug, whoop, so now we should be able to plug the display in there and run the cables through that hole and then back down behind the dash. So yeah, the, the, the wires will come up through here and then you can see whoop, all the way down there, down into the footwell we've got access to run the cables. Okay, there we go. All plugged in with the cables coming out the back. My very technical wire rodding mechanism or threading mechanism. Uh, giant, uh, giant chopstick uh, and a bit of um, masking tape. There we go. In there, back in there. It's actually not so bad. And that's a pleb like me saying that. Proof will be in the pudding when we plug it all back together and see if it actually works. I've got to um, plug in the wires into this thing down here now. Uh, yeah, not too confident about that, but let's see how we go. Right, so we've connected up the CAN bus there. I think that's correct. Red to red, red blue to blue, and pin them back in. And then we've just got to do the power supply. All right, so this is the moment of truth, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's see if it actually starts. And with any luck, Ooh wee! Look at that. So, well, power at least, and uh, not sure what all that means, but we will see that in a minute. I'm going to finish putting all that back together. That initial screen was just a startup configuration, um, so the thing was working fine. Alrighty then, so we're going to do some early morning runs today. We're going to see the performance of this car. We're going to see some of the output readings that this guy is giving us out today. We are interested in intake temperatures air intake temperatures and we are interested in the 100 to 200 kilometer uh, speed that this car can do so how long it takes for the car to go from 100 k's to 200 k's that's 60 miles an hour to 124 miles an hour uh, in British terms so the reason we're interested in that is because when we're on track we're not really too interested in about 0 to 60 times because we're never really starting from a standstill we're, when we're coming out of a corner we're already probably doing 40 50 60 miles an hour and then we're going to go all the way up to about 100 miles an hour so that's why we're interested in that number specifically and to measure that number we've got this guy uh, this is a race logic D box a V performance box or something like that and we are interested in this 100 to 200 k's number there. This and then this is the thing that I've just installed yesterday. We can see the air intake temperature there. We can't get this reading on the stock um, monitor readout in the car, so this is why I've installed this, not just to look nice, but so we can get this intake air intake temperature reading here. And the reason we're interested in the air intake temperature is when we start to tune the car, if the car doesn't have enough cold air coming into it, it will start to retard the timing of the engine and then therefore slow the car down. That might not be apparent on a dyno run or on one single run where you're on the street or something like that but when you're on the track and you're constantly decelerating and accelerating that can really start to take its toll on the air intake temperatures of the car and the, and the cooling system so we want to make sure that basically where we are stock and once we've done tuning and done any power upgrades we can see where those numbers are and hopefully we are not running too much higher so with that let's get out there You'll have to bear with me here, the footage is atrocious, it seems to be focusing on the hill outside for the entirety of this clip. But basically we're just going to get a few power readings, some data, and I'll throw that up on the screen throughout this little clip. 9.7 seconds, intakes at 30, let's bring it back down to another one. Here again, 20, 40, 50, intakes at 30, 180, 190, 200, intakes at 30, 132, bring it back down again, that was 11 seconds that time, quite a difference. Intakes creeping up to 33 degrees. Yeah, 
30 degrees, which is quite good. So on three runs we had what, 9.7, 10 and a bit, and an 11.7 I think. Bring them up on the screen, yeah, 10.3. So around about 10 seconds, 100 to 200, that's 60 miles an hour to 120 miles an hour in British terms. And that's the stock system, stock intake, stock engine, stock tune, stock weight, half a tank of fuel running on 95. So yeah, that's where we're at, but that's where we're at. That's the baseline. Welcome back to the F87. It's been about, I don't know, five or six weeks since the last bit of video you just saw where I was putting on the OBD scanner. This car in the meantime has been over to a workshop down in Kent called WG Motorworks. It's run by Warren down there and the car has been under the knife. It has had various things done to it. First off, it's had the crank cup fix. This addresses problems with the car to do with the crank, the famous crank hub slipping, and it is a full fix. It's better than the capture plate, which still allows the slipping from time to time. This is a full on crank hub fix, a solid crank hub. <laughs> After that, we've done a few different engine modifications. We've done uh, sport 200 cell sports cats. We've done uh, GPF um, delete, or rather, we've ripped out the GPF um, in internals and gutted it to increase exhaust throughput and flow. In the engine bay, we've done charge pipes, front radiator, top mount intercooler by by Wagner, and of course, we've done hybrid turbos which is that little sound you just heard just then I've got to say the car is incredible I really want to do some speed runs and we can see those 100 to 200 numbers but this rain or this weather is just not going to allow for us to do that even on that little squirt you just saw just then the car was already skipping sideways and that was in I don't, I think the car, that was running the 580 horsepower map. So, you know, the car wasn't even giving it all its beans. I was at about 4,000 revs as well. So yeah, this car will uh, quickly end up going sideways if we try and explore the full power potential of what it's got. I will tell you what it can do power wise though. And that is across four maps. So on the lowest tuned map, we've got 458 horsepower. On the second tuned map, we've got 580 horsepower. And then on the third tune, we're running up into the 630 horsepower. <laughs> and then just for pub bragging rights, in the fourth map, when we're going all out, <laughs> we're running, <laughs> wait for it. 675 horsepower <laughs> I mean the mind boggles just how we can get that sort of power out of these engines but I've got the dyno results to prove it and I'm sure that the 100 to 200 times um, will reflect the power I'm expecting well into the fives um, on, a, on a clean run on a, on a dry day I'm just going to show you quickly how we can change the maps while on the fly in the car so we can do that by double clicking the res button and that, that brings up an indicator on the rev counter at the 1000, 2000, 3000 and 4000 markers about which map you're using. And then you can scroll through that with the scroll button on the left hand side there. You can see that happening in here. The reason that we did all that work before with the OBD scanner and the testing of the, uh, the intake air temperatures um, was so that we had a baseline and we could see what was going on once we tuned done some runs on the dyno with this car um, and we are com comfortably sub 40 Celsius IATs on a map 4 power run um, the temperatures are staying in at around 36 so yeah all in all a good day I would wait for some dry weather but yeah this car's going off to Swift so um, unfortunately it's gonna have to wait and I say it's going off to Swift because we are not finished with this car it's going in for a whole host of upgrades 
so you'll have to stay tuned to see what's happening with that until next time if you like what you've seen today like comment down below subscribe and i will see you in the next one